Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture series of Gate in Data Science and AI. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the inferences rules in the propositional logic. Okay. So in the previous few lectures, we have discussed about what is propositional logic, what are the different types of operators used in this logic, and with examples also, right? So in this lecture, we are going to discuss few inferences rules. Okay. Now, if you remember, in the last lecture, we have discussed about this model checking, right? So what is model? So what is model checking, right? Or how we can draw a conclusion or infer something from a knowledge base. So this is what we have discussed in the previous lecture. Like if you remember, knowledge base entailed from alpha value, right? So if knowledge base is true, then alpha is also true, right? So this is what we have discussed in the previous lecture. But model checking is not an efficient algorithm because it has to consider every possible model before giving the answer, right? So, in the last lecture, if you remember, a query R is true if under all the models, that is, if, if under all the models where KB is true, R is true as well, right? So, this is what we have seen. If KB is true, then R is also true, right? Because we are inferencing some or we are drawing some conclusion based on the knowledge base itself, right? So, inference rules allow us to generate new information based on existing knowledge without considering every possible model, right? So, this is what inference rule is. In the case of model checking, we have to consider every possible model. So, in inferences rule, we can generate a new information based on the existing knowledge without, without considering the every possible model, okay? So, what are inference rules? Let us discuss now. So, inference rules are usually represent using a horizontal bar that separates the top bar that is called as premise and from the bottom bar that is called as conclusion. Okay. So, what is premise and conclusion? Suppose this is my horizontal bar. Okay. Above that, I am writing my premise and this is what my conclusion is. So, what is, con so what is premise? Premise is basically a knowledge we have. This is basically a knowledge base, right? knowledge base we can say right so whatever the knowledge we have whatever the existing knowledge we have this is that is basically a premises and what is conclusion so based on this premises whatever the conclusion we can draw that is basically a conclusion okay so the premise is whatever knowledge we have that is called as premises and the conclusion is what knowledge can be generated based on the premise okay so we'll see one example also so that will be much clear to you so now in this example, consider that our premise consists of the following propositions. So first one is it is raining, then Harry is inside and it is raining. Okay. So we have two things here. First, it is raining, then Harry is inside and it is raining. By just looking at these two particular statements, okay. So this is our required premise. Okay. This is our premise because this is a required uh, knowledge, right? So existing knowledge, right? So based on this premise, what we can conclude? Yes. If it is raining, then Harry is inside and we are given it is raining. So, I can directly say Harry is inside then, right? I know if it is raining, then Harry is inside and I, and I also know that it is raining. So, I can conclude that Harry is inside, right? So, based on this rule, most reasonable humans can conclude that Harry is inside, right? So, this is simple as that, nothing much complicated, but we are just using the horizontal bar to represent inference rule. So, above that, we are writing a premise that is basically existing knowledge we have. And here, it is basically a conclusion, right? So, that's what. So, and this conclusion is getting a derived or inferred from this particular uh, knowledge base, right? So, whatever we have discussed just right now, that is basically a modus ponens, okay? So, modus ponens is basically a type of inference rule we used in the previous example. So, which is fancy way of saying that if we know an implication and it's antecedent to be true, then the consequent is true as well. Okay. So, this is uh, implies, right? This is implication, right? Alpha implies beta. So, here we know, okay, if alpha is true, then beta is also true, right? But if we given this particular statement and we also given that alpha is true in this case, so what I can conclude, beta is also true then, right? So, this is what modus ponens is, right? So, it, this works in the case of implication, right? So, and we have given that antecedent is true. So, if implication is given and if antecedent is true, then we can say it's consequent is also true, right? So, this is what modus ponens is. Now, the next is and elimination. So, and elimination. If and proposition is true, then any one atomic proposition within it true as well, 
so if you see if you see the truth table of and okay so when this and will be true when both of the proposition will be true then only i can say this and is true right for example if we know harry is friends with ron and hermione right now what we can conclude that harry is friends with hermione okay so by just looking at this particular proposition alpha and beta so this alpha and beta is true right so we are considering this is as true okay if this is true then what we can draw the conclusion based on that and alpha is given to us so alpha is true it means beta is also true or if beta is given to us so beta is true it means alpha is also true right so i know harry is friends with ron and hermione so can i conclude that harry is friends with ron and harry is friends with hermione also right so this is what we can conclude by using the and elimination rules right so we need to consider that whatever the existing knowledge we have that is basically true okay and this is what we can conclude from that now here we have double negation elimination so we already discussed in the equivalence rule but let us discuss it here also the proposition that is negated twice is it true right suppose p is equivalent to true okay so what is negation of a p that is false right and again what is negation of a uh, negation of p that is negation of false that will be true right so proposition that is negated twice is basically a true so for example consider the proposition it is not true that harry did not pass the test okay it is not true that harry did not pass the test we can pass it in a following way it is not true that harry did not pass the test or negation of harry did not pass the test and finally we can say okay negation of negation will get cancelled so harry passed the test so two negation cancel each other making the proposition harry pass the test as true okay so this is simple as that but just remember for this case we uh, generally name it as double negation elimination okay so what is implication elimination now is implication elimination and modus ponens both are different thing okay these both are different thing so an implication is equivalent to a or relation between negated antecedent and consequent okay so as an example the proposition if it is raining harry is inside right so this is what our implication is this is alpha implies beta here alpha is it is raining beta is harry is inside now this is equivalent to the proposition it is not raining or harry is inside right so it is equivalent to the proposition that it is not raining or harry is inside so same thing we can do like we can mention like this alpha implies beta so what we can conclude from this negation of alpha or beta so if it is not raining or had is inside so this is basically implication elimination okay so please remember this terminology which they can ask you question based on this itself right then we have biconditional elimination a biconditional proposition is equivalent to an implication and its inverse with and connective okay for example it is raining if and only if so this is basically a, a bidirectional right if it is raining if and only if harry is inside now this is equivalent to if it is raining harry is inside and if harry is inside it is raining okay so this is by conditional elimination so just remember that okay if b alpha by direction beta then we can say alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha so this is also very important uh, part so please remember by condition elimination also now what is de morgan's law so we already discussed in the previous lecture but let us discuss one more time so it is possible to turn and connectives into or connective right this is for for which we use de morgan's law consider the following propositions it is not true that both harry and ron passed the test okay it is not true that both harry and ron passed the test from this it is possible to conclude that it is not true that harry passed the test or it is not true that ron passed the test right so we can say it is not true that that both harry and ron passed the test but from this we can conclude that na it is not true that harry uh, passed the test it is not true that ron passed the test right so that's it so for an and proposition earlier to be true at least one of the proposition in the or proposition must be true right
see for example here you can see the negation of a and b okay if it is given to me so i can say negation of a or negation of b same in this case also like negation of a or b it's equivalent to negation of a and negation of b okay so these two both are equivalent right so that's what we have discussed in the de morgan's law but here in the case of inferences rule if this is given to us we can conclude like this will also be true if this is given to us we can conclude that this will be also true right so yeah so this is about de morgan's law now what is distributive property this is also we have discussed a proposition with two elements that are grouped with and or or connectives can be distributed or broken down into smaller unit consisting of and and or okay so here you can see a and in bracket beta or gamma so what we can say by using distributive property alpha and beta or alpha and gamma right same thing for here also alpha or in bracket beta and gamma then alpha or beta and alpha and gamma or gamma right or gamma so this is what we have discussed in the previous lecture that is basically distributive property okay so this resolution this important concept resolution so resolution is a powerful inference rule that states that if one of two atomic proposition in an or proposition is false okay so out of one or two atomic proposition in an or proposition is false then the other has to be true right then only we can say our this complete uh, knowledge base or we can say proposition is true because this is for our operator so for example given the proposition ron is the great hall or hermoin is the is in the library so in addition to the proposition ron is uh, ron is not in the great hall we can conclude that hermoin is in the library okay so we can just write it like this way so we have p or q right but we also know that negation of p is true okay so this is what our knowledge base of premise is right so premise is always true so here we know p or q but we also know negation of p is also true so it means that in order to this to be true q must be true so this is what we can conclude that q is also true from this two uh, proposition right so the resolution relies on complementary literals two of same atomic propositions where one is negated and other is not such as p and negation of p right so this is what we have discussed here that is basically a resolution okay it is very important concept so resolution can be further generalized and suppose that in additional to the proposition ron is in great hall or hermoin is in library we also know that ron is not in the great hall or harry is sleeping we can infer from this uh, like what we can infer from this using resolution that hermoin is in the library or harry is sleeping okay so if i just want to put in the proposition form so here you can say i know this p or q is true okay so this is true i also know negation of p or r is also true okay so from this can i say q or r is also true right so this is what inference rule is so all the inferences rule are, are equivalent to equivalence rule that what we have discussed in the previous lecture but here we have discussed with the help of examples and by using uh, this horizontal bar concept okay so they can represent like this so please remember that so above is premise that we consider always as true and based on the premise only we are drawing our conclusion that is mentioned below this horizontal line okay so this is one of the way of representation so please remember this so complementary literals allow us to generate new sentences through inferences by resolution thus inference algorithm locates complementary literals to generate new knowledge right so same thing here okay so i think that's it from this particular lecture and here we have completed our propositional logic uh, topic so I so i hope you understand the concept of propositional logic and whatever we have discussed today okay so that's it from this particular lecture thank you